up everybody, Gerald here and welcome back to another episode. We're back down here on Steve Lake at Darren Fishing Complex, hoping for a bite or two. The time is quarter to ten. I've been here about an hour and a half. I just wanted to get all three rods out and fishing before I started making the video. When I got here, there was one other gentleman on the lake. I am now all on my own because he's gone home. He was fishing in the swim over there and he managed to catch a 10 pounder. We're back in the swim that we finished off in last week. I did walk around the lake when I got here, but the opposite end of the lake was all still in the shade, so the water wouldn't have warmed up. And I was thinking if I come down here where the sun hits the water first, the fish might get on the move. I don't think I mentioned this in the last video, but as I was coming out to come fishing last time, I actually managed to break my bottom eye as I was loading the car. Now, I've managed to fix it myself. It's done a quick running repair, as you can see there. That's now the second one. This one also had a broken eye. That's now the second one where the bottom eye's broke. So I'm thinking about getting some new rods soon. These will do, and the running repairs are working, so it doesn't look too bad. You wouldn't even notice unless I pointed it out. Let me tell you where my rods are. So the left hand rod is in the spot that we were fishing last time we were here. It's really tight to that island just over there. That took me a couple of casts to get it there, but I got it in. The middle rod is where we caught the fish. So just in the middle of the two islands over there on the plateau. And then the right hand rod is off this island. And it's just there's a little gap just over there which goes through to the other side of the lake. So I'm fishing dead tight up to that gap. That took me about 37 casts to get it there. So a lot of people will just cast out their rod and if it roughly lands where they want it, they would leave it. Now I like my rods to be exactly where I want them. I want to be confident and happy that my rigs are fishing properly. So I took the time to get it right in the spot over there where I wanted it. It might have taken me 37 casts and it might have disturbed the swim for a while but I'd be happier knowing that I can now leave that there all day, put some bait around it and then hopefully catch a fish from it. So as you can see the sun is out, it's very warm. Now when I got here first thing this morning, there was a little bit of frost on the grass. So I thought if I fish to the end of the lake that's in the sun first, the fish might be on the move up this end, trying to absorb some of the heat. I'm definitely going to get sunburnt because I can feel it already. It is getting very warm, so hopefully we'll be able to get a fish. Now the gentleman I was talking to on the other side was saying they might possibly be spawning, which could be true. It was quite warm yesterday, the temperature of the water is quite high. I haven't got a thermometer on me, otherwise I would test it. Last time I was here it was warm as well and the roach were all in the uh, like in the shallow ends in the weed thrashing around so it could be getting near that time where they're all going to start spawning if they haven't already started spawning. So now it's time just to sit here relax and wait for a fish. Cheers. So I'm just going to show you up close the rigs that I'm using. They're extremely simple, very effective. All I'm using is a size 8 captor wide gape, some supernatural braid and a swan shot and this is what you get. So up this end when it focuses there's a swivel with a tiny little anti-tangle sleeve, a 25 pound braid all the way down to your swan shot to the size 8 captor wide gape hook with a pop up. That's just not that's knotted on and it just sits very nicely, like that in the water, off the bottom. Extremely simple, extremely effective, anyone can tie that rig. You don't need to go out and spend loads of money buying all the expensive rigs. You can tie that for yourself and it's cheap and effective. It's 10.30, just had a little bit of action on the middle rod, but unfortunately not from a fish. A coot has been diving all over my bait that's out there just in between two islands and uh, he picked up my rig so now I'm just wondering if it's reset and I'm a little bit worried so I might give it a recast. Okay, so I've recast the middle rod. What I've done is I've just brought it this way slightly more so it's just in slightly deeper water so that the coot can't get to it and hopefully it should leave the bait alone. I've put another 10 to 15 freebies out around it. 
So it's coming up to 12. I've just bought the right hand rod in and recast it because the coots were diving on it again and they picked it up. They seem to have knocked the shot off the rig as well, so I'm kind of glad I did. I've put it straight back where it was and I'm about to put some more bait around it. So it's one o'clock, I've just had my lunch. My auntie brought me down to McDonald's, which is a Whoa! F Holy sh I don't know if I got that on camera, but that f just scared the f out of me. So anyway, as I was saying, it's one o'clock, still no fish, I've just had my lunch. My auntie bought me a McDonald's down, which is really nice. And um, I've moved into the sun. Just, well, I'm just standing in the sun, really, and I haven't moved my peg. My swim's like right there. But if you're standing in the sun, it's nice and warm. As soon as you get in that shade with a little bit of breeze, it's half cold. So I thought I'd move down here and stay in the sun. Hopefully I don't get burnt. I'm also just looking at this swim, which is one down from where I am. And I'm fishing on the back side of this island with the left hand rod, but don't this island just look fishy? Got a lot of snags all just in along here. Got this channel down here. This would be a pretty good swim, I think, to fish. You know, you could pop one down in the channel, one on the island, one off the edge, and then you could even go off the edge of this island. My middle rod is in the middle of these two islands here. That's the big long island that goes all the way down the lake. And you've got this small island here and another small island here. So like I say, I'm on the back of this one, but yeah, this looks pretty good as well. So it's coming up to 1.30. I was thinking about reeling in my rods and going for a walk, but someone over on Tip Lake, which is a member's lake, just on the other side of these trees, has had an absolute screamer. So maybe now that the sun's gone past its highest, the fish might start to get on the feed. So here's a piece of advice for you. If you're gonna come fish Darrant, make sure you've got a rod pod because the ground around here is rock hard. So I've brought the rods in and gone for a walk. We're now right up the other end of the lake. And this is that island which is on the right hand side of my swim, which now runs, like I say, all the way up to the end. And then there's a tiny little bush island over there. Now, I've been here about a minute and already seen some sort of movement just off the edge of the island up here. It looked like a fish, so maybe, possibly, we're going to move. It worked last time, but I'm a little bit reluctant because I do know the fish get down that end towards the afternoon. I don't really know much about this end of the lake. Alright, so it's two o'clock, and what I'm thinking about doing is possibly moving down into the very first swim here. The one I was talking about earlier with the island, and then that island over there. So I can still fish basically where my middle rod is, to there, so I can put my right hand rod there. I'm then either going to put my middle rod off this edge of the island or this edge of the island, and then my left hand rod I'm going to try and get down in between here if I can. It's going to be a bit of a tight cast because of this bush here, but we're going to give it a go and see what happens. So we have moved into the new swim and all three rods are back out. I've got the right hand rod on the spot in between the two islands where we were fishing in the other swim. The middle rod is just off this island here. And then the left hand rod is down the channel, basically in the middle there. It wasn't as hard casting as I thought it was gonna be. What I did was, I came to this spot here. I cast over, it landed right in the middle and then I've lifted the rod up and over this bush and then just placed it down there. Kind of glad we did move. The right hand rod had a muscle on it and the left hand rod had no bait on it. We've got 15 minutes left before I've got to pack up and get myself off home. Looks like we're going to blank. I am on one of the tougher lakes, so we'll keep chugging away. Maybe we'll get a bite in the last 15 minutes like we did last time we were here, so let's keep going. Okay, so it's four o'clock and it's time to pack up and get ourselves off home. No fish today, but that won't discourage us. We will be back down here again, giving it another go. We might even try a different lake next time. But until then, tight lines, wet nets, and I'll see you all soon.